Today, in this video series, I want to talk about some of the basics of ham radio and some of the misconceptions that are out there and, and how this may or may not be something that you want to get into, spend that time and money on. Now, when you first, my problem with this was when I first got into ham radio, I heard all the stuff you could do with it and how it applies to preppers and the preparedness community. And it seemed, you know, it seemed just fantastic. But as you get into it, there's a lot more to it than, than you actually think. And that's what I want to go through in this video series is kind of what to expect with everything. So today I want to cover the very basic level of shortwave radios and ham radios and all the different other types of radios uh, and what you need to do to expand on that to be able to do some of the things that you thought you could do with ham radio when i first became interested in ham radio i thought it was a no-brainer because it was just head and shoulders above gmrs and frs and which it can be but it's going to take more than a technician license and a, ba a bail fang handheld radio to do the things that you want it to do also, in this video series, I want to cover some of the different types of radios, like the GMRS, the FRS, and the MURS, and what they can do. I want to talk about getting your ham radio license, uh, what that's going to take, uh, getting your initial equipment, and what to expect from the, the ham community in general. Uh, while there are a lot of preppers in the ham community, there's a lot more that they just aren't they're not at the level that we are while a lot of people in the ham community are interested in in disaster communications and all that they don't take it quite to the level that we do as as preppers so and also i'm going to have a, a there's a comment section below so if you have any questions or something that i didn't answer in this make sure and leave a comment uh, or you can even send me an email uh, and and i can get those questions answered for you so first off, uh, this picture isn't very basic, but I'm going to keep this pretty basic because I don't want to overwhelm anybody with the technical stuff like the diodes, the electrodes, the, the resistance, the volts, the amps, the ohms, and all of that stuff. Uh, I want to keep this as simple as possible. And then after you've watched this video series, you can decide for yourself if this is something that you want to get into. Uh, this picture right here seems a little bit confusing at first. But as you begin to take your test, all of this stuff becomes a lot clearer. And hopefully some of this will become clearer uh, towards the end of this, this video series as well. So like I said, I don't want to overwhelm anybody, but this is some of the stuff that you can expect from the, the ham radio stuff. If you are an electrician or anything like that, you probably understand some of this stuff. But if you're not, if you're like me, uh, this, this looks like Chinese to you. Okay, so let's get into what to expect from ham radio right out of the box. Uh, it's it's pretty simple. You get your license, you get your little manual, uh, you get your handheld radio, you get your license, and you're good to go, right? Well, not so much because just like any skill, uh, you need to practice and you need to learn to, to be able to upgrade and get better at that. Uh, take driving, for example. You can get your, your driver's license when you're a teenager, uh, and you can drive a car around, but in order to, say, drive a semi-truck, you would need to upgrade your license to a CDL. Or maybe you wanted to fly an airplane, you would have to get your pilot's license to be able to do that. The same principle applies to ham radio. Or take shooting, for example. You know, you, you start out with a BB gun, and maybe you want to, to move up to a, a regular handgun. And then, say, from there, you want to practice uh, shooting long range, so you would need some sort of rifle and a scope. So it just progresses from there. So the skills that you learn from this, this video series right here is just the basic stuff. And then after that, you can expand on that stuff. Or maybe you've just decided, maybe after this video series, you decide that you just want to stick with GMRS or FRS uh, or MURS. Those are, those are fine for you. That's completely up to you. But that's what this whole uh, video series is about, is explaining exactly what to expect to figure out if you want to go that direction. Uh, basically, with your technician license, once you get your technician license, uh, like I was just saying, it's just your ticket into the game. 
Uh, most of the time when you pass a test, it means you're fluent in that subject, but you're not, uh, you know, you, like say you take Spanish 101, for example, uh, you're going to know quite a bit about Spanish, but you're not going to be able to have a conversation in Spanish. So uh, the technician ch test just shows that you're making a commitment to ham radio and that you understand the rules and you understand some of the basics uh, that's going on. And as you progress in that, you're going to learn a lot more about ham radio and what you can do and the things that you can do and figure out what you're going to have to do uh, to get to that level. So let's go ahead and talk about some reasons why uh, ham radio is so popular in the preparedness community and some of the things that it can do. Uh, there's a saying in the ham community that when all else fails, ham radio gets through. You have more flexibility with ham, uh, different modes, different frequencies, different levels of experience and different equipment. A lot of different things that can be done with ham radio that can't be done with some of these other services. Uh, ham radio also has ARIES, which is a membership and it's the Amateur Radio Emergency Services. And you see these all the time in public events. You can see, you, maybe you've seen guys at parades. They also help out in large and small scale disasters, uh, hurricanes, stuff like that, where the power's out and the regular communications can't get through. Uh, ham, operate, ham operators are able to do that type of stuff. Uh, like I said earlier, a lot of ham operators are involved in disaster preparedness to some extent. It may not be to the level that, that we are as preppers, uh, but there's a lot of similarities there. So it, it makes it good uh, for preppers. Now, there are some places uh, you can go that are just for preparedness-minded ham operators, uh, like the Amron uh, radio network, uh, the, the membership group there. And we'll, I'll go into a little bit more about that later on as well. But one of the main things with ham radio is that disaster communications, and that's kind of why we, we also are interested in it as well. Uh, also with ham radio, it gives us the, the, the option for local communications when the grid is down or we don't have any other options, you know, the cell phone, stuff like that. Uh, you're not going to have the range that, say, a cell phone does. Uh, but they're great for local communications or even groups. Say you've got a mag group, uh, they're great for those types of communications as long as everybody has the correct equipment and all that. But even, you know, groups, it's great for training, great for connecting with other ham operators, maybe even connecting with people that you didn't know uh, in your community that are interested in the same types of things as you. Uh, they're great for, you know, camping trips, learning, you know, getting the family into it, uh, keeping keeping track of everybody on camping trips. Uh, they're great for scouting, say in an SHTF situation, uh, somebody had to go out and scout, or maybe there's a lookout, a century overlook, you've got a large property in a century lookout. Uh, maybe you want to communicate back and forth with, with them. Uh, even say you're in a bug out route and you've got a mag mount antenna, you can communicate between cars. That way, if people get separated, uh, you can you can figure out where they are. Now, granted, you're, you're not going to have a huge range and a lot of this is line of sight, but uh, it's going to give you more options as far as communicating in different vehicles. It, it just gives you a lot of options that you won't have uh, when the grid is down. Now, we'll talk a, a little bit about long distance comms, too. Uh, a lot of our a lot of our concerns are more likely to be local situations. So so while long range comms will be important, we're more likely to be concerned with our local situation. Uh, long term comms would be great. It, it would be great if we could, you know, talk to somebody, say, in Arkansas or something like that. They would have to have the same equipment as us or, or the, the equipment to be able to do something like that. Uh, so there's just a lot more variables into it. That's why getting your ham license now before the S hits the fan uh, and getting these connections made is is important because you need to have somebody to talk to. I mean, it, it you may get valuable information if you're able to talk to somebody in a different county or a different state. Uh, but most likely we're going to be um, concerned about our local situation. And like I said, both point A and point B need to have the skills and the equipment uh, to handle those communications. Uh, with this, the long range communications, it's one, one of those things you hear about when you first get into ham radio. Hey, I'd love to be able to do that and do that. But there's a little bit more to it and a little bit more, there's a little bit more time that goes into it and a lot more money that goes into it as well. So uh, we'll get into some of that, but a lot of your stuff is going to be local. So just keep that in mind. So what I want to do now 
is go over some of the different types of radio services and what they can do. This is one of those things that can get a little confusing sometimes, trying to figure out what the different radio services can do and what they can't do, and uh, is it worth getting into ham radio, or will one of these other things, uh, one of these other radio services uh, do what I need them to do? Uh, and it gets even more complicated when these companies that sell these radios kind of overstate their radio's capabilities when they say that hey this radio will go 50 50 miles or or whatever it is now the reason they can say that i'm sure is because in perfect conditions maybe it can reach that 10 20 mile range or whatever uh, but the odds of us being in the, having the ideal conditions when it matters are are pretty pretty slim. So what I want to go through is some of the the realistic expectations of some of these different radio services. So what I want to do first is we'll go over this chart here, which kind of gives a general idea of all of these different radio services and what they can do. Now on this chart here, you've got the solid line, which is a 90% probability, uh, de depending on the different conditions and your equipment. And then the dotted red line is a 75% probability, which means there's there's a fairly good chance that it'll, it'll get out there. And the yellow dotted line is what I call the good luck with that line, uh, meaning that you might be able to, but don't depend on it. So at first here, we've got the ham radio HF, which is high frequency, SSB, which is single sideband at 100 watts. You can expect 30, you know, for most, for the most part, you can expect about 30 miles out of that. Uh, and, you know, maybe even up to 600 uh, with the right equipment and everything. Now, with this chart, this is, as it says on the top, with a base antenna. So, you've, you, like I said, you've got to have the right equipment. You've got to have your radio with uh, the right antenna uh, to reach these ranges. But uh, the next one is ham radio VHF FM, 20 watts. You can expect about 17 miles, maybe 20, you know, good luck with that range, 20 to 25 miles uh, ham radio VHF FM 5 watts, which is your basic Baofeng ham radios. Uh, you can expect about 15 miles with that. Uh, this is all line of sight too. So if you just have your Baofeng ham radio with the, you know, the small antenna on that, and I'll go through my, my stuff here in a bit, but if you just have your, your ham radio with your small antenna on that, if you've got 15 miles line of sight, uh, you can expect to get that out of that. Uh, and then maybe up to, you know, 20, uh, 20 miles with the, the right antenna and everything. Now, CBs, the SSB single sideband, 100 watt, uh, you can get 20 miles out of that and possibly up to 30. I don't, I haven't done a lot of research into CB radio, so I don't know a whole lot about these. Uh, but, you know, if that's something that you want to look into, you can do a little bit of research on that. Uh, CB single sideband at 12 watts, you can expect about the same as the Baofeng ham radio, 15 miles, uh, maybe up to 20, 25 miles. Uh, CB AM, the 5 watts, you can expect about 10 miles, maybe up to 15 or 20. The MERS radio, which we're going to go into in a bit, yeah, VHF FM is two, at 2 watts, you can expect about 12 miles, so a little bit less than the ham radio, uh, and maybe up to 15 or so. Uh, 15, good luck with that range. The GMRS radio, which is UAV, UHF FM, is 5 watts. With a 5-watt radio, you can get about 9 miles, so even less than the MERS and the ham radio, and then possibly you know up to 10, 11 miles, something like that. Uh, the FRS, the HT, which is handy talky, those are a half watt, and those are basically the you know the the radios you get from Walmart, which basically right out of the package that's what you get. They're half watt. They have the antenna. Uh, you can't mess with them or anything like that. You can get about two miles. So those you know may be good for if you you know just got a mag group or uh, you're on a camping trip. Uh, good for the kids, stuff like that. But not there. There's just a lot of better options when it comes to the ranges you can get with these different different radio services. So uh, FRS is what it is, I suppose. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, what you can expect out of some of these different radio uh, services, like the, the GMRS, the FRS, the MURS, and ham radios, uh, to give you a better idea 
about what each one of these can do, uh, what what it takes to get into them, whether they require a license or not, uh, to help you make a better informed decision. So make sure uh, watch that video, and we will talk to you all soon.